All right, guys, let's talk about exporting an MP3 in Pro Tools. So I saw that this was a really common search on YouTube, so that's why I'm making this video. Hopefully some of you guys find this helpful. So basically, if you want to export an MP3 in Pro Tools, I have this session open. It's a beat in progress. And you basically want to start by highlighting the time frame that you want to uh, export, right? So if it's the whole beat that you want to export, highlight from the very end of the beat to the very beginning. And I've showed this in other videos before. What I tend to do is drop a marker and I will be like one end. And so the one here is I'm matching this number here because that's the number for the marker. And then if my beat starts at the beginning, what I can do is I can go period one period on my numeric keypad. You have to have a numeric keypad for that to work. And it jumps to that marker for my end point. And then I do shift return and it highlights to the beginning. So now I've told Pro Tools what time frame to export. This is really important so you don't get a bunch of silence at the end of your audio file. So you tell it what time frame you want to export. You can also just click and drag. That's fine. But I like to do period one period, shift enter. And then you look at what all your tracks are going out. So you might have more complicated routing than this. This is just the start of a beat here that I've been working on. So I have everything going out, command eight here. This is a remnant from someone else's session, this routing here. But basically, everything's going out through Command-8, so that's what I'm going to try to match when I go to Export. So I'm going to go File, Bounce Mix. And so the first thing I'll do is make sure that I, for the mix source, I'm matching whatever my output is. So if my output says Out 1, 2, I want to then match it here. If it says, for example, Command-8, like it says here, left and right, monitor left and right, there's like a very, there's a bunch of things that it can say. Um, but basically, you want to match whatever you're using. So I'm going to match what I'm using here. That looks good. You want to give the file a name here. I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then what you can do is you can either pick MP3 and have it make just an MP3 for you. Or what I like to do is make a higher quality WAV file or AFF. They're both very high quality file types. So I usually do a high quality WAV and then I check off this box for it to add an MP3. So I can do both at once. And you know, MP3s are kind of interesting. You can go down this whole rabbit hole about how MP3 codecs were chosen and how the winning one ultimately came to be and, you know, how they actually remove or decide what to remove in terms of the audio to make the more compressed file. There's a whole uh, thing about that that I, I just find fascinating, the history on that. And I think... I think the book Perfecting Sound Forever goes into it in a little detail. I think that's one of the places where I've heard about that history. If you want to check out that book, I'll put a – oh, I, I made the whole camera move. I'll put a link in the description for you guys. It's one of the books that we read in my book club on the Patreon. So uh, I just found it so, so fascinating how they chose the different codecs. But basically keep in mind that an MP3 is a compressed file. So that's different than, for example, our compressor that we put – on our tracks in Pro Tools. So there's audio compression, which is like our inserts, our effects, and then there's data compression. So audio compression, what you're usually doing with it is you're taking the loud stuff and making it quieter, and then you're bringing everything up. So you're evening out the dynamics, how loud the stuff is. That has to do with loudness. It doesn't have to do with data, right? So when we compress down to an MP3, that's a form of data compression. That's like the compression that a computer does when it makes a zip file, for example. So it's removing some content and it's being smart about it. It's using an algorithm, but it's removing content to make it a smaller file size. So that's why a lot of times if it's something that's going to be streaming or if it's something like, for example, an audiobook where it's streaming, you don't necessarily need the high fidelity. People tend to like an MP3 file because it will stream faster, it will download faster. Things like audiobooks, podcasts, stuff like that. People often want MP3s. And honestly, I have a bunch of clients that prefer having an MP3 of a rough mix sent to them because they will then listen to it on their phone and stuff, and it's easier for them to ha just have the MP3. So I'm very often creating an MP3 at the same time that I'm creating the higher quality uh, WAV file, for example. And if you want an example of what is removed when an MP3 is created, there's this thing called the Ghost in the MP3 Project. I'll put a link to it in the description below. It's actually fascinating. But it's basically someone took, they figured out how to um, create what's removed when an MP3 is made and listen to just that. So they isolated what's actually removed and then they made basically made art out of it, made an art project out of that. So if you want to actually hear what tends to be removed when an MP3 is created, go check out that link. I'll put it in the description. Again, it's the Ghost in the MP3 project. 
Okay, so I think I have a video about actually bouncing out audio. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on this stuff, but basically with bit depth and sample rate, you want to match whatever your session is at unless you have a specific request for something else. For example, I have a video about what bit depth is and what sample rate is, so I'll put links either links in the description or cards up on the screen for that and then basically here what you want to do is if you want one stereo file you want to pick interleaved otherwise multiple mono will create a separate file for your left and your right and good luck playing that on a media player that's kind of made for when it's going into a, you know someone else's daw and then you have mono summed which is like if you have panning you no longer have panning it is now a mono track so if you want to have the standard like stereo audio file you'll want to pick interleaved here and again, you can either check off and add an MP3 or you can choose that as your main file type here for export. And then the only other thing that I tend to do is I'll check and make sure it's going to the bounced files folder. If you want it going somewhere else for any reason, you can send it to any other folder that you want. But usually the bounced files folder is a great place to put it. It's really easy to find. It's within that main Pro Tools session folder. So I just leave it there. And then offline, if this is checked off, it goes faster than real time. So if you don't want to listen through the entire thing, I would choose offline. So I'm just gonna hit bounce here and it's gonna ask me what I want for my MP3 metadata. So this window only pops up if you chose to make an MP3 file. So the big things that I'll look for here is if I want it to be a high quality MP3, I will choose this number, the highest number, 320 kilobits per second. And so basically what that is telling you is, is it's the rate that the data is passing through. So it tells you basically if it's higher quality or lower quality, right? If you have more data passing through per second, that's gonna actually create a bigger file size for, for a file that has the same length of, of time, right? So if I were to export this twice and make a 320 and a 192, the 320 would be the bigger file as long as I kept my actual uh, highlight here the same, right? My actual time, the actual length of my file the same. So just keep that in mind. If you want the higher quality MP3, pick 320. If, for example, someone wants something specific, like a lower number, then you know pick whatever the specific thing is. I think Audible wants 192, so I've done that before. But usually I'll just do 320 because it's MP3s don't take a ton of actual storage space on your computer anymore, so I'll tend to just do 320. And if you want, a really good experiment is to do the same exact file and have it 320 and then do another export at like 192, for example, or even lower and listen to the difference. There's a huge, huge difference. So that's a really good experiment to do. Even, you know, pick a track and import it and then export and try it. It's it's a crazy difference between three, 320 and 192. And then I like to do the slowest option here. It's less likely to have errors. It's supposed to be higher quality. So I usually just do the slowest. It doesn't take that long. So I don't mind it being slower. Uh, I feel like that's kind of more a remnant from when computers were a bit slower. And then what I'll do is I'll just put my title in here. So track title. For artist, you know, I'll put the artist name. Give me being super creative here. Album name. Um, and then if you want, you can put the track number. I'll do this if it's an album or something like that. And the year. You can do genres if you want. It depends on what you're working on, right? If you're working on a podcast, then you might not touch this. I don't think podcasts are an option here. No. Wow, they have porn groove as an option. Hmm. <laughs> but yeah, um, you know, if you're working on music, you might want to pick the genre. And this, you know, whether or not I fill this out completely with the metadata it will depend on if it's like a rough mix for someone or if it's supposed to be or might be the final file. So it depends. And so this is all your metadata stuff. You know, when you open up the file within some kind of media player, this is the information that will pop up there with an MP3. So, you know, fill it out if you want that information to pop up. If you're just collabing with someone and sending them a rough mix, you might not care so much. But then you just hit OK. And it bounces it out for you. And we just wait as it bounces it out. And then what I like to do is go find it in the finder and listen back and make sure it worked. So I will find it here within my session folder, within the bounced files folder, and I will check and just make sure these both play back. So these are the ones I just made. And I have my default set to QuickTime. I know QuickTime's on the way out, so I, I don't know if I would recommend doing that. VLC Media Player is a really good free media player that you can get. I really hate when it opens up in iTunes. iTunes annoys me, so <laughs> I like to listen in QuickTime still, but I'll probably switch to VLC Media Player once uh, QuickTime's completely out. 
But anyway, you just want to play back and make sure it works and make sure, you know, it has the metadata that you wanted. You didn't misspell anything, all that stuff. So I think that's basically it. So yeah, that's exporting an MP3 in Pro Tools. I hope this helps someone out there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all that stuff. It helps support this channel, helps keep me going. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise, and my patrons get access to some additional content. We have a Discord we're all hanging out on. So please feel free to check that out. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. Anyway, I hope you guys are doing well. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.